The other part of it is the story. The story, the mood, the emotion, the thing you are trying to convey. And here is a really important thing to understand about photography. And the difference between doing a snapshot for yourself and doing a photo for a competition. When you take a photo for yourself, maybe you're out there, you, you know, nice sunset, you take a quick photo. There's your, your dog in the garden, you take a photo of the dog in the garden. There's a nice rose sitting on your table, which you pluck from the garden, you take a photo of the rose. And while these things are fine for you, if, that, if all you need them for is a record of the event, then that's fine. It doesn't need to be anything more. You take a photo of your grandchild or uh, your pet or something, and it's a nice reminder. But when you get into competition level, that photo has to go beyond your memory and beyond your, your emotional attachment to that thing and to be able to convey that to somebody else. And this is something that gets lost in an awful lot of photography is I can take a photo and I can take a photo of an old book because I loved this book as a child. And so when I look at so when I see the photo, it evokes all the memories I had as a child of reading this and all what was going on in my life. But I can show that photo to somebody else and to somebody else it's, hmm, it's a book. So what? It doesn't mean anything. Because they didn't read that book. They didn't have my childhood experience. They can't access my memories. So if you are trying to get somebody else to feel the emotion, you have to look at the photo and go, what do I need to add or what do I need to take away from this photo in order to hone, to purify that essence of story, of mood, of emotion? How do I get somebody else to feel what I feel about this? And that's the much harder thing to do. Now, the technicals, keeping it in focus, understanding your editing, understanding your composition, understanding your lighting, understanding your camera settings. These are all then an aid to getting your story across. Because if you change the lighting, you can sometimes make a story more powerful or less powerful. You can make something moodier or more dramatic or, or less dramatic and softer. Um, if you change, I, I've got earlier episodes, I've talked quite a lot about the notion of use of diagonals. Diagonals add an energy and a movement into a picture, whereas horizontals and verticals stabilise it and reduce that energy. So understanding these techniques are not just about trying to impress somebody else with your technical ability, it's about using them as tools in order to be able to get your point across. To be able, you know, if you are, if you are trying to say this is an energetic driving picture and you want to have that mood of energy, then you need to be thinking about your diagonals as an example. So this is, so the technical and the story are the two really powerful things. The third aspect is the, for the person in a competition is the judge. And every judge is different. Every judge is bringing something else of it to them. So, for example, I mean, if we go back to the football picture, because I'm not a football player, because, or I've never really thought, I was one of these appallingly, awfully uncoordinated children. As a child, I was, when they picked the teams, uh, you know, we we're all standing up against the wall, two captains out front, I was always the last kid to be picked. And now I'm not doing this to try and evoke sympathy. It's just that that's the way it was. But the point I'm trying to get across with that is that experience actually turned me off football. And now I've probably lost a whole bunch of football fans here who say, well, I'm not going to follow a photographer who doesn't like football. Um, the thing is, is that football doesn't do it for me in the same way. So I'm not going to be drawn to a football picture in the same way that I'm going to be drawn to a portrait or a constructed photo. My whole photography, you go to Kim Ayer's photography, and I'm all about constructed photos. Um, so you also need to understand the, that the judge is going to come up with different ideas. Now that's not to say that I can't be, you know, I, I've seen some fantastic sports shots of footballers, you know, in midair, heading the ball or with rain coming down and that foot kicking through and you can see spray coming off and at that point I can go wow I'm caught up in the emotion the photographer has really got the emotion that goes past and supplants the the limitations of my experience and desires so 
if you know what you're doing and you can convey that story, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get it in such a way that it goes past whatever prejudices or um, moods or experiences that the judge actually has. And of course, the other thing is, is how well does all this fit the competition title? You know, if your competition title is something blue and you shove in a red sunset, it's not going to do very well. Even if it's the most glorious sunset that has ever been taken, it's in the wrong competition. So in terms of understanding competition, you need to understand, well, you need to understand the title and make sure your photo matches up to it. You need to understand uh, the story you are trying to convey. You need to make sure then that once you are clear on what mood or idea, your concept you are trying to convey, every aspect of that photo is either contributing to that or it's taking away from it. In which case you need to sort of be looking at the different aspects of what can I do to enhance this photo to get that story across. Um, and then all your technical understanding, your shutter speed, your you know, and all this is all in support of these things. So that's probably the most useful information you're ever likely to get about how to enter a competition or understand. I wish somebody told me all these things years ago and that just saved me an awful lot of bottom 10% in, in various competitions. Um, not to say that that still doesn't happen occasionally, but less often. If you found this useful, let your friends know and hit subscribe.